Okay, finding out my results. How'd I do? Okay, how did it go? Not great. I rigged up a quick curtain so I could do some filming in my office uh, without, you know, my neighbors being able to see what I'm doing. You know, give it a little privacy. But the cat seems to love it a bit too much. Anyways, as far as villainous cats go, he's not too bad. Okay, so today I'm actually gonna take some time and I'm gonna take the test for the Da Vinci Resolve color certification. Does that mean anything career-wise? Not really, but I'm doing it more just to get it done. And honestly, taking the course was absolutely worthwhile. Now, if you're watching this video, you're probably wondering if this makes sense for you to take this course. And I'll say that depends on a few things. So here's my context. This is actually an awkward spot, so I'm just gonna adjust the camera and set up more, somewhere more solid. For me, as you know, as someone who does color grading as a filmmaker, I started off with Final Cut, and then I moved to Color, which was a part of the Final Cut Pro bundle, and then switched to Adobe Premiere, did Speed Grade while Speed Grade was a thing. So Color and Speed Grade were very good programs that allowed you to like, you know, manipulate your footage, do really in-depth color grading. Eventually those went away. So for a long time I was without a dedicated color grading program. And then eventually DaVinci Resolve, which was, you know, a heavy hitter for years, released a free version. And that was pretty game changing for a lot of people. So the free version came out. I've been using the free version for years and I highly recommend using the free version if you don't wanna pay for the studio license. But recently, I think this spring, I sprung for the speed editor. And with that comes the studio license. So I've been using the studio full studio version for, you know, a few months. There's not a huge difference. There are things you can do in one, but not the other, but you can get a lot done with the free version. And so yes, I have a lot of experience with DaVinci Resolve, and you'd think that after years of using it, I would know it inside and out, but the reality is no. There is a lot of gaps in my knowledge and a lot of things that I hadn't learned yet, and taking the course was hugely beneficial. Even if you don't actually take the test, which, you know, getting the certification, I don't think is the, you know, end of the world, but I do think taking the course and familiarizing yourself with it is super important. Now, I wish this this was available when I started DaVinci Resolve a couple years ago, but the live course that I was part of was actually recorded. Now it's on YouTube. Anyone can watch it anytime. It's super awesome. I highly recommend it. I'm gonna leave links down below for anyone who wants to go watch those. I think that's huge benefit. So, the real question is, if I take this test, will I pass? I, I feel pretty good about it, but you know what? I haven't done a ton of studying. I watched the course and that was a few months ago. So I'm gonna take the test and we're just gonna see what happens. So wish me luck. Okay, so I'm about to hit log in and start the test. Obviously I'm not gonna show you what I'm doing on the test. Um, also the questions change every time. So if you fail once and do it over, you're gonna get a new set of questions. Maybe you'll get some overlap, maybe not, who knows? Um, so yeah, I'm gonna start it and then I have a limited amount of time to do this. All right, Kat, you get out of here. Passing grade is 85% or better. You have 60 minutes for the exam. It's a 24 hour wait period between exam attempts. Okay, finding out my results. How'd I do? <laughs> okay, how did it go? Not great. <laughs> it went okay. I got 76%. And so, I was really hoping to just like pass it first time. But 76% uh, means that I'm really close. It uh, means next time I should be able to nail it. 
Yeah, and I learned a lot about how the test is actually performed. And by the end of it, I was a lot faster. That, whew. Okay, so I'm gonna try again tomorrow and we'll see how it goes. It is, I don't know, two weeks later, I got COVID, I was out of commission, I got busy. I didn't finish the test until now. And I just did my second round and da, 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 I got 90%. And I'll tell you exactly what I did differently between the two tests that made the difference. So the big takeaway I got from doing this is essentially what I learned in the first test. So here's what I learned about taking this test. First, it's definitely worthwhile watching all the videos that they have that I watched when they're launching this course. Next, the Colorist Guide to DaVinci Resolve has all the information you need. You can have a read through it before you take the test. That helps a lot. But the Colors Guide is the key thing that you want open while you're doing the test. So while you're doing the test, it's all open book. They want you to be able to research everything. A big part of the test is your ability to figure out the answers on your own. So having that open, having DaVinci Resolve open just to do some tests here and there, which is probably only 5% of what I actually did. But a big part of what I did is a question would come up and I'd read through it, I'd look for the information, and if I didn't know the answer, I instantly went back to the guide, hit Command Find to search through text, and put in some keywords to essentially look for that information. And so it's kind of just like your ability to speed research while you're doing the test, right? So there's definitely things that I didn't know, different things that are like very specific that you know don't typically work into my workflow. So going through that, definitely helped with it. Now, I absolutely learned a lot from taking the test the first time. I would even recommend that the first time you take the test, do it more so that you're preparing to do it a second time, right? Obviously try and get a passing grade, because if you do it once, perfect. But knowing that there's a possibility to do it again is really helpful. And learning how to take the test is kind of a big part of actually taking the test. So. Now that I'm certified, what does this mean? It really just means that I can prove that I know the basics of the program. It doesn't mean that I am an awesome color grader. It doesn't mean that like I know everything about the program. It just means that I have a general understanding of that basic function. Um, obviously, I think with color grading, it is subjective and it is something that you're always going to be learning. Yeah. So there's no end to the learning that you can do with color grading. So I've been doing it for well over a decade and I'm still learning a ton. Now, is it worth doing the course? First of all, it's free. So what can it hurt? Second of all, if you are new to DaVinci Resolve, say you're coming from Premiere or Final Cut or Avid, I would highly recommend just going through the steps of the course just to orient yourself with the program, right? It gives you a really good sense of what's happening in the program, and it's not just the color grading course, there's also an editing course, there's their fusion course, there's the Fairlight course, and it's absolutely worth looking into, and even if you're just slowly doing it over, you know, weeks or months or whatever it is, it's absolutely worth it to help orient you to it. Taking the actual test, I mean, it kind of makes it all worthwhile to be like, I have completion of this event, but it, it, I don't know that it's critical. I've never had a client ask me if I'm certified in any program, but that's up to you. So do what you want to do. So if this video was helpful, hit the like button and follow if you want to watch more videos like this, where I talk about filmmaking and all that sort of thing. That is generally what I do on this channel. Otherwise, I'll see you later.